Hey, it's Rachel. Today on Crack Your Bible, we are going to be talking about how it does not matter how bad it is. When God gives you a promise, best believe you can take that to the bank because he is always true to his word. If he gives you a promise, he will deliver. Now, before we get started, make sure you hit subscribe with the bell with the parentheses so you're notified of a new gospel message because, of course, Satan and Google, they don't want you to know the gospel, so just jump through their hoops, hit subscribe with the bell with the parentheses, and let's get started. Now, I know that Mondays we usually talk about Genesis, where we're going through chronologically through the Bible, but then we talk about other things relating to Christianity and this Christian life on Wednesdays and Fridays. And I had something planned where I would switch it up today, but I have some good news because before I had even thought of Crack Your Bible, before this was even in my mind, um, a couple of years ago, I was in an accident. And prior to the accident, um, I had just been picking up some weird stuff in my spirit, like you need to pray over uh, yourself when you're out and about, and you need to be extra vigilant while you're driving. And people will tell you today, like when you have dreams, that whenever you see like a car in your dream, it's always indicative of your ministry. So just keep that in mind. So I had been vigilant about this. I had prayed over some things because of course Satan is all always out there ready to get you. Like he's always ready to take you out. So you always have to be prepared. And unfortunately I was the victim of an accident. So it could have been way, way, way worse than it was. But I, I honestly believe that the fact that I had been praying over myself and, you know, I had been listening to the Holy Spirit, that it really prevented it from being a lot worse than it could have been. But that is finally over. And praise Jesus that the finale, the ending of this whole fiasco is that every single penny that I put into Crack Your Bible has now been repaid back to me in full many times over. What makes me so excited is that it's not just like, oh wow, now I'm I'm repaid for what I put into Crack Your Bible and now I don't have to worry about that financial cost or that financial burden because you guys know I've never asked for any money. I don't even put up my P.O. box so you guys can't even donate to me right now because that's just not what I'm hearing from the Holy Spirit to do. But I am so excited because this is just like Genesis 50-20 coming into fruition into my life where it's what you had planned for evil god had planned for good so before i even thought of this channel where satan was trying to cut off my ministry before before it had even gotten off the ground god had plans for good where it financed this ministry so praise jesus for this we know that in all things god works together for the good of those who love him who are called according to his purpose that's romans 8 28 and it's just so exciting to see that in my own life when satan tries to cut something off prematurely god says nope you're not going to do this, Satan. I have plans for this for good. So praise Jesus that it, that is over and that while, yes, I might have some battle scars left over it, from it, I mean, so did all the apostles. Like, they still have the marks of where Satan tried to get them down, but they persevered because if God's for us, who can be against us? So praise Jesus that is out of the way and all the costs for Crack Your Bible have now been reimbursed. So... Praise Jesus for that. But that gets me into Genesis 12 because we've been talking about Abram and how he's left his city. He is with his entire corporation. And last two weeks ago, we talked about how he came to Shechem and there were Canaanites in the land. And, you know, I've been thinking about this because he's doing what God told him to do. He's listening to the Holy Spirit. And bam, this happens. He's going to where God tells him to go, and there's there's giants in the land. And it's like, oh, great. <sighs> but, you know, we talked about how that's where he built an altar. He praised God. You know, in the midst of all these giants, he praised God. God appeared to him and said, I'm going to give this land to your descendants. And over the past couple weeks, I've just been thinking about this. And I, I'm like, God, I know there's something else that I'm missing. What else am I missing about this story? Because I know that it's just glossed over. But I know that you wouldn't just appear here for no reason. Like, why Shechem? Why did you go to Shechem? Now, Shechem means shoulder. 
and I went on like the Israeli National Parks websites, like everything that I could find out about Shechem. And I found out some really cool stuff. So even though we've already talked about Genesis 12, 7, 6 and 7, I want to talk about it a little bit more because in Shechem, it's above Jerusalem and you have to go through Shechem to go to the Sea of Galilee. So Jesus went to Shechem when he confronted the woman that had five husbands at the well of Jacob. But, you know, God promised Abram that he was going to give this land to his descendants. And Abram didn't necessarily see that, but God is always true to his word. And Abram's standing here, he's made the altar, and it's like, you just, if he could only see how God was going to fulfill this promise, because in Shechem, there's these two mountains. You have Mount Gerizim, and then you have Mount Ebal. And it's really, really interesting because when the children of God were going to the promised land, Moses had the Levites stand on both mountains. You had the tribes, six on one side, six on the other. And on Mount Gerizim, they yelled out the promises for obeying God. These are the things that God is going to give you as you come into this land. And then on the other side, on Mount Ebal, which is higher than Mount Gerizim, um, the people were yelling out the curses for disobeying God. So you have the blessings and the curses as you're entering the promised land. And as each was yelled out, the people would in unison say, Amen. This is exactly where God said he was going to give Abram's descendants this land. And then we see later on in Deuteronomy and then the book of Joshua, we see them going straight through this city and they are listening to the promises and the curses for obeying God as they go into the promised land. Like this promise is being fulfilled. And then later on, you have the Messiah coming to a Gentile and saying, I'm, I'm the Messiah. I am he. I'm the one that you all have heard about. Jesus is going to the Gentiles. Like, this is so exciting. And, you know, I was like, God, I know there's something else. I know there's something else in your word because of all the mountains, why Mount Gerizim and why Mount Ebal? So I did some research about the names. And Gerizim means cut up. It comes from this root word, which is uh, garaz, which means cut up, which means like rocky. It's kind of like a slang term for saying something is rocky. So the mountain's all like choppy and cut up. And then Mount Ebal, Ebal means a heap of ruins or it's all twisted up. So on one side you have the rock and on the other side you have the ruins. On the side where you have God's blessings is the rock. And on the side that's the ruins, you have God's curses. You can either stake your faith on God's promises and God's truth and God's word, or you can ignore God and incur the curses and the ruins that comes from being apart from God. So which are you going to choose? Are you going to say no matter what? I don't care if there's Nephilim. I don't care if there's giants. I am going to do what God tells me to do because I am staking my faith on God's promises. I know that he is solid, rocky foundation. I'm not going to stake my faith or anything that I do on the ruins, the heap of ruins over here. I'm not going to put my trust over on this side. I don't care if it's higher. I'm going to put myself, I'm going to stake my faith in the foundation on the rock, that rocky ground. That's where I want to be because I know that God is true to his word. What's really interesting about these two mountains is that they're made out of pneumolytic limestone. Around this entire ridge, you have calcium carbonate, which is like chalk. So as that erodes down, what you have left is pneumolytic limestone. And so you have those two mountains. So everything else, all the weak stuff has worn away, but the only thing standing is this solid limestone, the word of God, a solid rock. When everything else is gone, the earth can pass away, but what will still be left? The word, God's word. Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will always be here. And that is like so symbolic. So everything has worn away, but you have these two rocks, these two mountains. God's word, blessings and curses are still God's words, good or bad. And that's what's left. So you have this strong stone on which you can plant your foundation on. 
And it's made of pneumolytic limestone, which is made up of the shells and the detritus of these dead animals that are sea creatures. And I find that interesting because it's going to be the only rock which has evidence of the earth being baptized in it. Because we knew that the flood was a symbolic baptism where it's been washed away. And we know that Jesus is called the cornerstone. And <laughs> this stone is used in quarry, like it's all quarried out. And this type of limestone is even found in the pyramids. Like, this is how strong it is. But it's just so interesting that we have all of this symbolism, and maybe I'm not doing a great job of this today, but I just find it so amazing that Shechem means shoulder. And this is the place where the lost sheep, God's people, are coming in to take over the promised land where he was true to his promise, like, I'm going to give this land to your descendants, Abram. And we see <laughs> Jesus, like, sorry, I'm, like, getting emotional. Because this is, this is huge here. This is huge. Because if Shechem is shoulder, and you have God's people, and he, he always references them as his sheep. He is the good shepherd. And in Luke, it talks about how if you have sheep and one sheep is lost, and you find that sheep, you're gonna put it on your shoulders, and you are going to get, you're excited. You tell everyone, hey, let's rejoice, let's get excited, because I lost my sheep and now it is found. And Jesus tells us that one person, when one person comes into God's kingdom, this lost sheep over here, when one person comes into God's kingdom, the rejoicing in heaven is so much far greater than a person with their lost sheep because what was once lost has now been found. And we see that where these lost people, God's lost sheep, are on his shoulder going into the land that was promised to their forefather, Abram. It's really emotional knowing how God sees us. Like, God really... God cares for us and just the symbolism throughout the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation, it's all there. Like you just see God's handiwork throughout the Bible and just knowing that that is how much God cares for us, that he puts all of this symbolism in the Bible to show how much he loves and cares for us. It's just, oh, it's, it's, it's emotional because you know, like no matter what you're going through, it doesn't matter what you've just come out of, whether it's the giants or you've come out of slavery in Egypt, God is with you and he is excited and he is rejoicing, showing you like, you are my lost sheep and I am happy that you are, your home, your home, you're mine. And we need to always remember that. When we come into God's presence, when we've been found, we are that sheep that he puts on his shoulder where he's rejoicing, hey, what was lost has now been found. So, oh, it's so exciting. And oh, I had never even thought about that. I just thought about that while I was actually editing this video and I had to come back and refilm a part because it was just like, wow, God, this is incredible. You have Jesus and he is the cornerstone. We have these two mountains that are the only thing left after the calcium carbonate has eroded away. We have the blessings and the curses. We have the rocky foundation and we have the ruins. But then we also have the baptism of this earth. And what a picture of God that really is. And it's like, not only do we see God, but we see that the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we see that just in these mountains, in this rock. And it's like, this is where God chose to show himself to Abram. And then we see Jesus the Messiah is back at this exact same place, showing himself to the Samaritan woman saying, I'm the Messiah. We see this is where the children of Israel are going into the promised land and hearing God's blessings and curses. So it doesn't matter if you are surrounded by giants, take it to the bank that you don't even know what's going on. And while all around you, you see Satan's plan, you see how he's corrupted things, but just know God is going to do what he promises 
you that he'll do. He is true to his word. And if he says, I'm going to give you this land, he's going to give you this land. If he says, I'm going to do all things for good, he's going to work all things for good for you. So I want you to be encouraged that it does not matter how bad it looks around you. It does not matter how long it takes. God is going to stay true to his word. And I see that not only in my life, but I see it in Abram's as well. So that's all that I wanted to share with you. I hope you will like, subscribe, and share. And I would love it if you would check out a playlist right up here because we have to put on the full armor of God every single day to take a stand against the schemes of the devil. And I will talk to you later. Bye.